So I'm finding a problem that the the music actually. So the sound of my desktop is not working. I think. So the sound of my desktop. I need to check that out because it's annoying. Yesterday I did like a three hours live session. So let me, if I play this. The face board for the MetaHuman creators. Can you hear this? Um, so when you first open up one of these scenes, it may be a little overwhelming to see the amount of controls faced, uh, because you, you that's... faced with. Um, so I'm just going to break it down I'm into different sections and hopefully now. it will make it a little clearer to understand exactly what control go does what here. and where it lies. And I play. It's not... Creators. Can you hear this? Um, so oh. when you first open up one of these scenes. Okay, so you can hear. Uh, good news. What's up? So, but the music is not. Wait one second. So if I put this, and then I pause, and then I play, it may be a little. Uh, the music is not. Wait one second. So if I put this, okay, okay, it's working, it's working, cool. Um, so let's move forward. Then I'm gonna put just some really low background music. That should work, no? And then, and then, let's go to OBS. Yeah, because I was I was uh, giving feedback uh, to the to the sound, but now sounds the music sounds okay more or less. And yeah, yeah, of course it was just to test, no worries at all. So we got a new video surprise right here. Um, I'm gonna watch it with you. I didn't watch it. I just want to make a kind of on the fly uh, analysis of this. I didn't check more than the live stream I did the other day and was a little bit <laughs> stupid because I missed the most important point that it was live link ready. Um, so yeah, let's see. Um, so I'm just going to break it down way. into different sections and hopefully it'll make it a little clearer to understand exactly what control does what and where it lies. Uh, it'll make things a little bit easier Hello, guys. to understand it a bit better. Um, so I'm going to start with... So obviously a big shout to... Uh, who is the rigger? Trolls, you'll be using a lot. Big shout to Adam Walton, which is going to go, I think, a walk through the rig. So, let's see. Which is the jaw control. This control here in this yellow box underneath this face shape. Uh, that's another good thing to kind of bear in mind. The face is laid out in a way that these kind of reflect where the controls will be moving the face. So, you can imagine this would be the mouth and the lips and corners and things. We've got the nose in the center, we've got the eyes and the eyebrows above it. Um, it's just try to try and help you know visually aid you. To, to decide where you need to be looking for certain controls. But anyway, we'll um, get back to the jaw down here. Uh, so this one moves in the TY, so up and down, and left and right in the TX. Swing it around, and you can see it's got a lot of uh, secondary motion coming from like the ears and the jaw and all the rest of that sort of thing, so you don't have to worry about like mixing controls to get a nice, just normal jaw open. Uh, the ones to the right of it, this one here, this is the jaw forward and back. So this is going to push the, the jaw back into the face or pull it forward like this. This kind of all uh, these, all these UI is in varying degrees. Uh, reminds me, I mean, mixed. many good tricks I saw in the VFX uh, and the ones to UIs the UI's in the industry. Right, this is a jaw clench control. So you see, at so the you side can of the see jaw already. There, it's kind of clenching the teeth together and creating this kind of a uh, tense look in the side of the face. This control should really only be used when the jaw is shut because it's a, it's an impact of the teeth clenching together to create mm -hmm. this kind of muscle tension around here. That's cool. You wouldn't use this control when the jaw is open. It's just not how a face works. Yeah. <laughs> so I would reserve that for when the teeth are clenching together. Uh, this one down here is a jaw open extreme, which again is another one which I wouldn't really use in this, this control unless the jaw is already at the maximum distance because then this one here then gives you some extra range if you need like a really big uh, scream or super shocked face or something like that and you're just not getting enough range from this one you have the jaw open extreme uh, and it actually has some different effects on the uh, cheeks around here you can see it kind of pushes them out and pulls the ears back it kind of just increases the extreme shape of a jaw open 
Okay, that's uh, pretty much all there is to say about the jaw. I'm going to move on to the corner controls next. So these are going to be things that... Are I mean, I, I think for granted... Uh, 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 well, this works different in video games than in, in VFX. Uh, blend shapes and bones are working together. Uh, taking the delta, you need to remove the delta of the blend shape and add that extra deformation on top later. Uh, because otherwise, every single controller is doing not just one thing, but different things. So that was obvious, uh, because obviously you see how in the animation is quite detailed and many things happen only opening the jaw. Uh, they thought about that, obviously. And that's the big difference between a face rig or a, a professional face rig. In the moment, you see a lot of secondary uh, 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 variables changing different other potential blend shapes all connected. Like, gonna move the you know, like a wood rig. Out and down. Um, I'm going to start with the corner pull, which are these two here. And if you look at the lines and the trajectories of the corners uh, of the controls, sorry, and the direction they go, it kind of gives you an idea that's of where amazing. the corners yeah. are going to be going. So in this, we're going up and diagonal. So it's a, it's a wide... Again, that's really good because many rigs, they just put a vertical line and then you go up and down, which is okay. You can do that as an animator. But if you have a visual idea of how it's going to be reacting in the face, you save microseconds to the animator that you can see, ah, this is a moment you can, on the moment you, you know, it's eye-eye hand coordination. In the moment you start moving out a scroller, I can do that with numbers. You remember um, uh, 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 how to train your dragon? Uh, they, the first one, they animated just literally with uh, putting uh, values. Yes, you can do that. But the more visual you have your controllers, you save in the long run hours, if not days, to animators to understand what is going to happen before you see that on the screen. Obviously, the next level is to see that uh, literally, like, funnily enough, uh, what is the name of the the system they did for How to Train Your Dragon 2, I think, that you can just uh, animate using a Wacom uh, or a Cintiq uh, and you just sculpt on that. That's very, very high level. You don't want to go to that level, but uh, this is a good compromise. It's on the middle. It's like you you know and the axis is already uh, pointing to the local uh, direction, to the forward vector, so you can know more or less what is going to happen. And that's Wide good. and lifting control. It gives you a classic Wow, and, and many shape. things are happening at the same time. That's amazing. It's already Zero. great. Uh, so yeah, we've got a big, nice, wide smile with this control here. So moving them together gives you a symmetrical one, but they can be used... I want to put this on the hands of our animators. Smile. You can use these in any variation you like. Because I'm really uh, curious how from this, is the sharp this could work in pull. animation. As this an one animator. is a more vertical smile, so it's going to go more straight up the face, not as wide. The nostrils. And it doesn't affect as much as the cheeks uh, in the outside as the corner pull did. So this is a sharp corner pull, more of a sharp smile, and it's going to affect the, the nasal labial line a bit more. This line down here running down the nose, and it's going to bunch the cheeks up. A little more as opposed to the corner pole which had a much wider cheek effect and lifted them up around the eyes and the cheeks around hello here. guys uh, moving down we've got the dimpler so these dimple controls they move out wide so you can see by the, the line there it's going to pull the corners wide and it also pulls them mm. back into the face into this kind of dimpling so it's going to be activating tense uh, tension in the cheeks here if she had dimples, it would be creating dimples. And it's kind of like that, that fake smile where you don't really bring in the rest of your cheeks to create <laughs> this kind of smile. It's really deadpan, like you didn't really mean it. You don't I find a joke funny. <laughs> that kind of smile. Uh, the one just below this is the corner depress, which is like a, it's a frowny kind of control. So when you're mm. happy with something, you bring these down and you get that kind of unhappy face. Really, really like polished these blend shapes, eh? Symmetrically. Really, really on, on the perfect still limits. We have the stretch control. So this, again, by the direction of the lines, it's going to move them down, but it's also going to move them wide. So it's going to pull the, con the, the corners out. I can see already here axis scale and Gitmo scale. So I guess this is a kind of hover override. I need to check this out, of course. And you have many options to have a cleaner UI, but I can see here, oh, no, this is the Gitmo scale, so I guess it's this, 
axis scale. Okay, no, no, no. Maybe it's not the multiplier. But I'm pretty sure you can just go somehow to multiply the reaction of, well of, of the parameters. And it creates tension all around the Hello, Will. Here. How are you? Like that. And all of these corner controls can be used together. And ones that work really well together, if you want like a nice big grimace, you can use the corner pull and the stretch. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the good thing. Really so let me see what he did, did here. Like that. And okay, all, of all symmetry can be used together. Yeah. And ones that work really well together. That's good. That's why the axis uh, is perfect. Like nice and you work in the local and boom. You can use the corner pull and the you stretch. You can take all them out all together, together. And you get this really big uh, kind of extreme tense grin. All these tiny things, they look, ah, oh, whatever, it's just an axis. Oh, cool. That's so great. But imagine an animator that has to click every single controller 2000 times a day. Imagine that. In the long run, again, imagine the amount of time you are saving. You don't want to waste time in, oh, I need to take this one, now another controller. Sometimes, you, for example, when I, I'm not a professional animator, I just animate because I need to pass some layout to the animators. You just want to pose the character sometimes with symmetry on, and then you tweak to break the symmetry. So you want to take the pose as fast as you can. So these kind of tiny things are quite uh, relevant. Again, maybe not in the short term, but in the long run, when you are working with... 2,000 shots in a movie, all these tiny things are very, very relevant. Hello, Hans. How are you today, man? To varying degrees. If you don't want so much of the uh, corner pull, you can bring those down. And you can see it's very fluid in the motion, increasing these on together. They're all designed to work very well together. That's something that we take for granted. I work uh, doing CG doubles and in real time and not real time. One of the most complex things because when you do, for example, you scan and you do you scan an actor, you have maybe a set of 120 different blend shapes and faces uh, that separated. They work great, but one what happens when you have a mix of four blend shapes? Of what happens if it's a smiling? You are using the smiling controllers and the what, the front controllers and the nostril controller. What happens when you mix four? blend shapes at the same time. We take this thing for granted, like, oh yeah, it's magic. No, no, you need designers to decide what is the weight every single time, and you have curves of influence, you have a blend shape that they are triggered if other controllers are used, uh, but maybe not the controller that moves that specific blend shape. So these things, we take that, we take them for granted, but there is a lot of uh, 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 design there happening under the hood to give you a good mix between blend shapes. What is too loud? What is too loud? My voice or my voice, right? What I can do is to put this. What is too loud? Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. I was reading the stupid thing, stupid. I was uh, reading the top the ones comments. that I would say avoid using um, sharp corner pull. Graph editor. And press. Well, that's a good question, actually. The graph editor in. So these four. So the sharp corner pull by the angle of the line, we're going up the face, which is a very vertical up movement. And these are going to pull the corners down. These are these are quite conflicting controls. So these aren't really designed, and the, the face doesn't really work in that way where these two would be coming on in high values. But they're still it's holding. It's always expected that you will, there will be some crossover during speech because we don't always just turn one muscle off and then turn the next one on. So there will be some <laughs> kind of crossover. But it would be very unlikely or if not impossible to have a maximum sharp corner pull with a maximum corner to press because these two are just going to kind of force the shape into force the face into this kind of strain but you got the point right uh, you can't have i mean you can control the biceps and the triceps at the same time uh, and you have this but a natural movement of the bicep is going to have a counter reaction in the triceps so in the same way the face works kind of uh, with, uh, uh, I don't know the name in English, it's called antagonist muscles. So some of the muscles on the face are antagonists of other muscles. Uh, I'm very sad that I don't remember uh, the, the, the name of a girl that does a lot of uh, insights of uh, uh, muscle and facial animation. And she's bringing a nice job about understanding how our face works. But I'm all sure these things are very, shape. very important. Um, it's not really a way the face usually moves. But again, the rig is... Hello, Shai. Uh, you know, it can do that if you... If you um, hello, Carlos, by the way. Um, okay, so then I'm going to... That's the that's the corner controls. So I'm going to move on to the lip controls next. So at the top... We'll see. Coming about back here, this is the upper lip raise. I want to just give so this... Moving free. these up. 
does what you think. It's going to lift that lip up. And this is uh, going to affect the, the nose as nose well. Three, so you get kind yeah. of a sneering effect from these. And they sit there at the top. I hope... Uh, the ones below. The opposite side. I'm going to tell Jay if he's online. Press. And that's going to pull the lower lip down. To watch this the stream. Like these. It's also got an effect on the chin. Just the, uh, the muscle dragging that lower lip down. I'm gonna check this on this core. And we have some extra controls down here, which is the chin raise. So this is a is a muscle where the, lower, the lower lip is pushing up, and it's gonna the raise the lower lip with it the Cito Juna. by impact. So you see that the, the, the pressure is coming from below. It's not a lifting motion from the top lip. There's no, uh, there's no muscle activation inside the side of the nose like there was with the upper lip raise. This is pure impact from the lower lip pushing the upper lip up. So, by that logic, it shouldn't really be used. The upper lip shouldn't, the upper lip chin raise shouldn't be used by itself, because this is an unnatural movement. You can't just lift your upper lip like this without engaging any kind of muscle. But the lower lip can raise by itself. So, if, for example, if I wanted to open the jaw a little, um, and then use chin raise to close it. That's that's something the human face can do, but we can't use the upper the upper chin raise by itself. It would always be an impact from this. Uh, okay, and uh, the very last one on the lips is the lips together control. So this one here, when you bring it on, it might look like nothing's happening. You're thinking, okay, this control doesn't work, but this control hmm. is only designed to be used when the when jaw you open is the jaw. Um, so this is going to keep the lips together, no matter where the jaw is. That's so really without cool. that on, if I open the jaw and take this off, it's going to open those lips again. Mm -hmm. So no matter where you pull the jaw around, it's going to keep those lips sealed. You get some nice chewing motion going on there. Crazy design, eh? So that's over here. But this is like the standards you can see in any rig uh, in VFX. So they are literally moving to VFX. This is pretty, pretty um, clear. That's pretty much all of the major lip controls, lip height controls, I would say. Uh, I'm going to move on to now shaping control. So these will be used a lot. These are the ones down here in this box. Uh, and these are going to be used a lot during speech for things like ch and sh phonemes. You're going to be using a lot of funnel. Rolling the lips out like ch, ch. Um, they can be used in all four corners independently. So if you just need a little bit of funnel, if you're going to do like an Elvis lip, <laughs> raise this. Um, come on you turn you off so that's the funnel control that's going to roll the lips out and, t and uh, uh, towards you the purse control next to it this is going to narrow the lips like so give you like a little Percy uh, Percy lips there good for like W shapes any uh, tight O shapes if the jaws open if you were using these together let's see get like O shapes. Really amazing the small wrinkles like in the in the lips. And the one next to it, let's close the jar again. So yeah, I literally, right and now, I just went to Discord and I just invited uh, uh, Jay Rosas and Asunta Campos, the main animators for the trailer of the Cito Yuna. I'm keeping an eye very closely to all this and I want to, because we already saw motion capture, I want to try key animation on this, and this is beautiful. I compared with the rig we got, that is a little more, well, way more simple. Uh, and I felt responsibility, obviously, to, to bring the animators tools that they feel comfortable with. Uh, this is like another level. Now I'm very curious about the graph editor, uh, because obviously animators spend most of the time seeing curves. There are different styles, as you can imagine. Some uh, animators prefer just to see everything in, in the in the UI here, and they even don't care about the curves. They just find find that naturally. And you can you can see all the the other extreme uh, animators that they don't even check the viewer. They just see curves, like chess players. They can see the next ten steps, and they understand how. You know, they, I'm pretty sure they are walking in the street and they don't see people walking, they see curves. <laughs> I'm pretty sure about this. So I think this is something I'm curious now, the graph editor. But yeah, we want to do a test 
let's see how we can do something together with the, the these animation tools just to be prepared for control. what is coming so this is next. gonna push the lips out let me know this by the way jay or asumta you are here in the chat uh all three of these the funnel so I can introduce towards, you. they're all designed to be used together um, so that you can have a varying degrees of, of any of these used together. They, they, they work in all sorts of combinations. Um, so you can ramp them all on if you want to. Get a very big kissy shape. Uh, so they're very they're very powerful controls, these ones, and you'll be using them a lot. And equally, they can be used with any of these as well. So nothing needs to be used in isolation. It's all designed to be uh, used together. Um, so that's the shape controls down here in the O section going to move down the face into these um, kind of tension controls here. So these are going to be when you like have uh, like lips pressing together. I'll go into that one first. That makes sense. And this is impact of the lips pressing mm -hmm. down on one another. So when you tense your lips together, use them here. Uh, this is another control that shouldn't really be used uh, if the lips aren't touching because this is, again, it's an impact control. So it's the pressure and force of your both of your lips pressing together. You shouldn't really be able to do that if your lips are apart. You get this kind of strange <laughs> shape. It's not natural to do that. But if, for example, the lips were closed and you were still pressing, that's fine. There's impact there. We can use that. Uh, the one to the left of it is the lips bite. This rolls the lips in and over the teeth. So it's going to roll them. And again, if the jaws open, a lot of these work well when the jaws open. So it rolls them over the top of the lips, uh, over top Pretty of the cool. teeth, sorry, in on themselves, like that, covering the teeth. And then this one over on the right is the lips tighten. And this is kind of just like a general tension in the lips. This can be used in all kinds of different shapes if you just need to add tension. It's not really caused by lips pressing together. You can tense your lips when they're apart as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the lips tighten control over here. M many options, and all of these yeah. controls, these ones can be used uh, in all four corners. The lips press can be used really left cool. and right, but only both together because like I mentioned before, these two are, these two are linked because they can't be used unless the lips are together. So there's no need to have a separation between top and bottom. And the lip sprite can also be used in the four different corners, depending on where you need to roll your lips in. And one extra powerful control I wanted to get into before I move on to the tweakers is the muzzle control. So this one here, right in the center, this is gonna swing the mouth around. So this is great for adding asim to any of your shapes, or if you need to change the height, but you don't want really a, a destructive change, you can change the, the lip heights. By moving up and down, so any combination no, I was saying that you can add a great muzzle to. All moves to uh, it's very natural to, to have this kind of moving quite constantly. It'll have varying degrees of left and right a lot of the time. Um, and yeah, this this is this one over here in the middle. Um, okay, and the ones I'm going to go into the cheeks area now. So we've done the mouth. That's kind of the majority of the mouth major controls on this part. This is good because this is basically what any rigger does with animators uh, when you want to start in a pro uh, to you, when you want to start to work in a project. Obviously, you don't drop animators to oh there this is the rig. You do a very quick video at least to do a hangover of how the rig works because even if the UI is really cool, it's good to explain hey, don't use these controllers and these controllers because they are not meant to be together. Obviously, you can you can do many things in a high level. You can, for example. Uh, say, okay, if you have this controller moved here, you can block this other controller or put maybe a, a pop-up, like, do you want to use this controller? You can, it's, it's more about workflows and pipeline, how, on, how much you want to put the balance between limits and design, no? Um, and again, design is all about constraints, and constraints is, are limits. So, yeah, it's, it's cool they have all open, uh, I'm wondering uh, how hard is to, uh, for example, again, freeze a controller if another controller is used at the same time, so you avoid to later do a research of, oh, why did we have a glitch here in the lips? Oh, it's because we have these three, four, five, six controllers are working together. So this does all for you. I'm wondering about uh, these tiny things, if something you can implement in the future. But I will be getting to the... Hey, uh, Joven Termita, how are you? Later, because they're more kind of bespoke controls to, for that fine sort of finesse detail. These are the major controls over here. 
Uh, so off to the sides of the face here, we have the cheek um, suck blow. So this is going to puff out the cheeks or suck them in. So using that big puffy cheeks or sucking them in as if they're, uh, you know, she's sucking her mouth, uh, cheeks against her teeth. And the lips blow, which is the one down here. It says lips blow. I just missed a little bit of ear This one puffs movement. out just the lips area. It's more frontal. Every single time the you move like so extreme the mouth, uh, muscles back in the, the ear of the ears move a bit. The, uh, the lips. You can do it's that, obviously. Like you can animate that manually. MVPs. If you want to puh, 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 that kind of thing, you can use lips blow. It's nice for that. But uh, it's still really, 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 really well impressive. With the suck blow together. So if I was to puff the cheeks out, and then if the lips were then to puff out, you just completely relaxed and just left all the all the air to be building. Around it's really cool. Well, you can add these together and it creates a nice combined shape. I guess this is the thing of three lateral behind. So what happened with uh, snappers? Yeah. I'm very Lip curious. What, what is the deal um, with the snappers? You know the, the snappers trick? Board now. So this one over here, this is for some extra fine detail, like I said before. So for example, this one on the left, this is thickness. I'm not sure if you can read that on this screen grab, but it says thickness at the top here. Um, and this is going to um, kind of in, uh, increase the thickness uh, horizontally so it's going to move the lips towards or back against the teeth so this is like pulling when you move them together it's like flattening them flattening them against the teeth really reducing the amount of volume in the lips and vice versa if you were to do the other way it's going to increase the volume of the lips push them out really really thickens them up um this is a, a non-destructive control so anytime it doesn't change like lip heights or anything so if i was to have some lip braids on and I just wanted to change the thickness. And I was like, actually, no, the uh, the upper lips changing volume here while it raises. You can do that, and you can see it doesn't change where the lip sits on the teeth. Hello, so Lebrus. Thank you, ma'am. And um, Obi, do you think this can be used in games soon? It's very non-destructive. It's meant control. to be. It's meant to be used in games because uh, you can see. I think there was nine, seven, eight, ten LODs. Uh, what I don't know is the release date, and obviously that's the wrong internal information, um, and that's their stuff. But the intention is. This, my feeling is gonna be usable for imagine games like um, Detroit Become Human, uh, Story Driven, or uh, like uh, Telltale games that I think now they close sadly. Uh, but yeah, I think it's gonna be useful both for the CG doubles in real time, which is a big deal already. I mean, even for offline renders, it's a big deal. Uh, having this in real time is a challenge, but they are going in the right path. Obviously, uh, still things I think they need to to polish, but it's uh, the fourth of so many departments. When we talk about CG doubles, it's like the holy grail. We are talking about motion capture, facial animation, uh, keyframe rigging, shading, and cannibale uh, design, uh, hair grooming, uh, muscle simulation, skin. It's, it's all things together. It's not like saying environments and you don't need to be worried about joints and motion capture environment. Okay, you can work with an eye, you can work with many technology, but in, in, in a kind of uh, bigger scope, the, the, the challenge is to do a digital avatar um, and cross the line of the Uncanny Valley. Um, they did something special with the animation and I'm very curious about the processes. But anyway, yes, the answer, of course, this is going to be completely usable in games because it's meant to be even compatible and scalable from a Android to a RTX 3090. So it's depending on what you have. Hello, Enki Fury. How are, Fury. Enki Fury, how are you? Uh, in from this is the roll control. So this is gonna, it's, it's a little bit like the bite, but it's not as powerful and it's more ice. This is really cool. Uh, every single rig, uh, it should have a first layer to do the main animation and then a tweaker layer that works like a kind of uh, ad <coughs> additive controllers. So this works in any kind of rig I know that is from VFX or is a professional rig. Even for example, if you have an effect simulation of the cloth, you still want to have controllers to tweak a animation post without destroying the original animation so you can have control of your main animation and you don't want to destroy and you don't want to create layers maybe the reason of the tweakers is because layers are not yet a thing in unreal engine and that makes sense the natural next steps okay we don't have layers in unreal engine and graph editor what is the next op option 
we need tweakers. And tweakers, at the end of the day, is the same thing as saying layer uh, with other name, kind of, kind of. You have different curves in other places, so you can work with both curves together. Isolated to the lips themselves instead of like a full mouth shape. Hmm. So it's kind of localized just to the lips. Hello, Thomas. Uh, again, you can use that in all four corners if you need to. Yes, it's actually lifelink ready. And I was a stupid and I didn't try it last time. So it's lifelink ready. The side, this one's 100%. Over, have the jaw open as well. You can see a lot of tests from corner, people uh, on sharp. the internet already. So this is going to pinch the corners. If you need to create maybe like a, a tighter shape in the corners, you can it is, it is. It's really pull good, these together. Look at this, man. <laughs> what pinch the them is going for on? like O shapes. Sometimes you just need a little bit more tension in the corners there. You can use the corner sharpeners for that and the opposite direction is going to open them wider yeah cool it's quite good sometimes if you have a big cry face it's more like granular granular yeah, tweaks you have your main animation you the and then on top you for the directors or these on uh, animation leads or animation supervisors kind of they can see okay the animation is cool let's um, bring more emotion in the lips out. let's tweak a little bit here and there and you, need, you don't need to destroy and play again with the main curves in your main uh, ui you use the tweaker layer to add this extra tiny detail, so it's, it's a way of yeah, trying to be quite destructive. And then in from that, the worst thing the you want to do control. is to is to have the animators working with just one curve, uh, because you can't get back, and you want always to rebalance. I guess I don't know. It would be nice if you can just wait how much the tweakers are affecting the the main rig. Because then you can go to the client, and here you can make, for example, the pose more aggressive or happier, no? Um, and with a weight uh, value, you can just uh, switch between the original animation and a second version. These kind of things are always quite uh, gold and money to, to go to a daily session or to a, any review session where you want to present different things and tune with a weight. Uh, this sure. is this is to maybe I just whole, didn't pay attention. The whole mouth um, uh, in the four corners towards mm. or. Uh, back against thank the you, teeth, Santiago. it doesn't change the volume of the lips, it just moves the actual distance and Thank you, Buster Monkey. Obviously, what is amazing is teeth. this tech. So I'm just uh, mirroring what I'm seeing and trying to give my insights. Um, um, that's most of the tweakers addressed over here. There are some extra ones which we probably wouldn't find too much use for. Um, there's some ones that move the teeth around, but again, we won't really use them in... <laughs> it is useful. I'm going to tell you what is useful. And I start to see, sorry about the, the post in the video here, sorry about that. <laughs> I know it's funny, but it is useful. He, uh, you know why? Because I already see a clear intention that this goes for photorealism uh, humans. Um, that means that it's going to be constraints. I can see the constraints in the UI quite visible, which makes sense uh, because we are talking with about photorealistic humans. However, I'm gonna tell you what is gonna happen if uh, the design doesn't change, which I don't want to change, that's okay. People that work like, for example, like me, uh, more in stylized characters uh, that finds, for example, things like uh, Riot Games or Blizzard Animation, Blur Animation, always a little bit more stylized characters, are gonna try to break this rig. Uh, are gonna try to push the limits of what is natural or not because at the end of the day when you talk about uh, animation you want to break the limits of the rig itself you want to do a squash and a stretch he says you don't want to use this you don't want to change the position of your teeth but if you are working with animation with a feature animation uh, you are breaking the controllers all the goddamn time so yes yes if, if at some point the, the, the people behind this uh, rig system is watching we always want options to break things. Maybe with a switcher, maybe with a boolean, maybe with a parameter that you can keep this in a high level while the things happen under the hood, but you want always to give animators the option, I want to make the head bigger. I want to make the, the neck stretch. I know it can bring some complication when we brought this to real-time tech, sorry, to mock-up tech, but um, just giving this tiny option is kind of a good start to say, no, no, I want just to make the mouth way bigger. No, but it's not about design. Yeah, but you know, animation, feature works in another kind of a scenario <laughs> in uh in speech or anything <laughs> your teeth definitely do not move while you talk they don't move like that but it's in animation yes. anyway um, in feature running but if you were like for, for certain shapes perhaps you were pushing something to, of a, course. to a, a really big extreme and you found some clipping or something because the, the rig was you, you, can, you can tweak it just like little bits if you need to to get certain shapes but or if you just wanted to change the the base height of the teeth you could do that from those controls there 
Um, you won't find yourself using that very much, but the option is there if you need it. I'm gonna use that very much. 100% uh, moving up yes. is these ones called lip shift. So on the corners here, these are very isolated corner movements. So this is again, <laughs> not to be used as a main shaper. This is more of a tweaker again, if, if you have a very, very bespoke need to have a certain um, shaped angle of corner. Uh, say like the corner pulls up, but you want it slightly turned down in the edges. You can come over to the lip shift area around here and change the corners uh, to however you however you'd like to. And in the middle, we've got a lip shift uh, left and right. So this is going to move the upper and lower lip left and right. This is not the same as the muzzle either. So the muzzle does the whole mouth and it twists it around the face. This is again, this is a tweaker. Should be used uh, for very specific reasons yeah again quite isolated the controllers they lower. don't work as a whole they work as a layer you want to animate on top and can be ad is additive uh, i guess and then another tweaker that i didn't talk about that is actually sitting on the main board is the mouse stickies because you will be using that a lot but it is a tweaker because it's it's high level detail and this is when for example when your mouth opens and your lips uh, have been stuck together you know when you have dry lips and your lips have stuck and then you get that kind of sticky peel as they open so the mouth sticky area is where you'd create your kind of peels. Wow. You can use these ones on the left and right. Um, the ones in the middle here. They do like a like a zipper style peel. So it's gonna come across from the edge and move out wow. wide. So as you'd open, you could that's turn really cool, it off eh? and you'd get like a sticky peel like this. That's like a, that's kind of a quicker way to get around it. I find it the, the best way to get a really nice detail one is to use these 10. So you have five on the upper and five on the lower, and they move the from the outside to the inside of the lips. So you can see it's just yeah, the, clay, the specific the area sip, in sip the corners effect. here. And it gives you more finesse over exactly how much you want on. Yeah, when you have that, you need to drink water right because you are the, middle, the hydrated. If you need it, so if you want like a really distinct asymmetrical peel, if one part of the lips open first, you could use them like this. Or sometimes you get parts where the um, just the very middle of the lip seeing it where just certain parts stick mm -hmm. um but you don't need it from like the the middle or uh, for, you know for example if like this is opened up the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. is stuck still you, you, you get what i mean we got we got it let me just turn these off so that's just stickies over there um, moving down the face, so that's... I'm just curious why he didn't do, some, did some, why he didn't do something to clear the transforms. Do they have a button to clear all the transforms? I don't think so yet. That's pretty much all of the mouth related controls I've talked about so far. And then moving down to the very bottom down here, we have some neck controls. So these ones here that's the next stretch oh Moving these is going to create oh, tension okay, cool and the uh, i guess that's a mix of normal uh c-bars or or blend shape maybe in the in the muscles running up and down the neck off target which work very well with the stretch control so this is the next stretch and it works very well with the with the mouth stretch because when we stretch our mouth out wide yo original nine also that? get that kind of impact on the neck mm -hmm. Now they're not linked together in this single control because again it gives you higher fidelity over exactly how much you want. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they work they work uh, very well together. The ones to the side of those are the mastoid. So this control kind of like strengthening the neck. This, these ones will be used a lot for kind of head movement more related. So the muscle that runs up and down that connects the head when you rotate your head around, these kind of mastoids uh, start acting. Cool. That's when you get angry as so well. One, you get really angry and your neck gets like this. The, uh, inhale, exhale. That happens to me time to time. So when we lift and drop, it's like when we're breathing. Breathing, so breathing, breathing in, uh, inhale, and getting really exhale, angry. You kind of see the neck inflate and deflate. Like you have all the blood in the um, brain the and you want to explode and the, your neck the gets like this. Gastric, <laughs> which just moves a little bit under the neck here. Only the neck with this amount sorry. of controllers is already really well with tongue. a lot. So when, like, if, you, if you try it and pull your tongue back and down into your mouth, you can feel underneath your chin, you'll feel a little lump kind of grow 
mm. that one is down here. So if you if you kind of connect it to tongue movement, it can really <laughs> help make uh, speech look <laughs> very believable. Because you can see it's not just from tongue and mouth; it's kind of affecting the whole neck as well. Um, in that same vein, the throw up down control. This is a female character, so the Adam's apple is not as pronounced, but this is basically the Adam's apple control. Moving that up and down, which we do a lot for speech. Uh, it's usually pitch orientated when we talk high, the um, throat will go up, talk low, kind of comes down. Uh, and the one at the very bottom is the swallow control. So this is if you do a big gulp, and it's kind of all built into one motion. So from zero, from the left to the right, from zero to one, it does a full I guess, I guess the uh, original line is either for one thing or the other, because for example, when we work in the Sito Yuna, we only use keyframe animation. Uh, we need this amount of detail. But obviously, you can connect any data um, have secondary blend shapes triggered by the controllers itself. Like, let's say, if you open the jaw 80, uh, 50%, you have a 20% of the uh, neck uh, controller ta -ta -ta, in X axis. So you can just wire your things. It's more or less, I think, like any kind of facial uh, capture system, like, uh, what is the name? Wire? Face wire and things like that, where you can tune uh, secondary actions, reactions with the controller. So both. But again, mm, I'm curious if you how you can bake this to the controllers. That's something I want to see in the graph editor. You have the data, you record it in the shot uh, in the sequencer, and then you want to see your curves. I don't know yet. Um, Swallow motion. I and didn't check it. Maybe there are some so pieces you do with that. From halfway already. point I'm not to sure. the end, and you get like a gulp, like that. Um. Okay, that's the neck controls there. I'm gonna show you the tongue now since we just talked about the tongue. So I'm gonna open the mouth for this. And inside here, there is a tongue control. Oh, it's a little dark in the mouth there. I'll stick it out so you can see. So there's the tongue peeping out there, the shadows. Think done, no? And we have very different, um, different very types narrow. of controls to control different parts of the tongue. The one on the left here is kind of like the main a full body tongue movement. Very narrow tongue though. The one just in from this, in this box, is kind of a more central, so it's kind of moving from the middle of the tongue. Wow. <laughs> She's saying IK, and the IK the for the, the tongue. Very tip. So it's just gonna flick up that little tip there. And they all move in uh, left to right, up and down. <laughs> you can get all kinds I of never saw this amount of detail in a tongue, I have to say. So you can <laughs> break it if you need to, but yes, it's nice and rigged. The guy is smiling, it's like, huh? <laughs> Why the hell you want to use that to that level? Hmm? Put that tongue back in the mouth now. We're done yes. with him. Yes, yes. Do that. We don't want to. We don't want to. Um, that's the tongue control. Feel our imagination flying. Of what this um, could And that's everything lower face related. So I'm going to move up towards the nose hey, now. So we have the nose there. control here, yeah, um, or in the center. This moves up and down in the Real TY, get like a no sprint. Control. Most of the game studios use in game or cinematic. This. And it impacts the brows, pulls all no, the No, every single company has the, their own. Inside of the eyes there. And there are some kind of as well rules for... that they apply for professional rigs that again, the idea of a design that um, blend shapes shouldn't be mixed with another blend shape and how they are have additive blend shapes and how you want tweakers to tweak on top. This is kind of shared. But every single company has their own designs. But at the end of the day, everyone ends up in the same ideas, more or less, because it's about the physics and anatomy and, and needs of animators. So it's both things. It's similar, but not always. It's not. It's not the same. For a nose flare, so when you kind of flare your nose, you can do it in the TX, and you can do them asymmetrically if you need to as well. But yeah, uh, it's you can decouple. You see the, the brown theory. movement coming in from the nose flare there. You can decouple that if you want. Different UIs. Uh, it's UX. quite natural for that to happen in, in motion, but I mean, stylistically, if you just didn't want the brows to come down, you can turn these controls off here, which are, which face are is near, great. near the eyebrows, but kind of like tiny. The problem with face war, uh, because it's basing AI, is taking many things for granted. Uh, in my case, because I have this kind of dark eyes and bird and, you know, like a homeless appearance. I'm not the best actor to have good data. So, yeah. 
I need to test you know, different systems. So if I turn I need to, that I, you know, as I said before to you, like uh, now, I, I, nose, I need to invest in more cap and I just so it's just isolated to the nose. Now. Leveraging you can do, is the you can do varying option. degrees. So you can you can do halfway if you just didn't want it as strong. Sorry, I did miss that click. So it's going to move them a bit, but not as much as maximum. You get the idea. And over on the tweaker board, so there's an extra level to the nose over here, which is the nasal labial. So this is going to increase the creasing down the side of the nose and mouth area down here. That's when you, yeah. when you smell a fart. Sorry about the joke. And now I think it's time to move on to the eyes. Um, so moving up the face as we were, the ones just down here is the squint control. So this is gonna increase the height of the lower lids. So we move them up. It's kind of squinting the eyes up. I'm curious. I'm more curious about the real time no, and more curious about the baking, the recording, the, the animographs, the animation channels. Next I'm more curious is about the cheap that. Raise. This does similar. It does raise I don't, the I don't, um, I'm not gonna get a final shot in well, real time. But it I want data. Caused by the data to push what matters here. So there's a bigger impact around the outside of the brows and around the, the crow's feet area. It's uh, it's pushing up and having a large effect on the <laughs> yes. whole of the upper sides of the face. It can be used together, as most of this rig can. So you can have squint and cheek pull on together. The face of not trusting the ones. someone. Amazing, yeah. Eh? Really, really nice natural movement. It's the blink. So if you move them down, it's going to blink. If you move them up, it's going to ah, widen yeah, the eyes. Really cool. So you nice. Nice blinks there. Again, they're not just isolated to the eyelids. It has motion around uh, the eyes, brows, and the cheek areas. It's a very, very, very polished work. Because we think this is... And uh, these ones here are above again, this. Again, we take many things for like granted, but there's a lot of when the design under the this hood. Is this is not easy to achieve. So sometimes you might notice it in, in people when they have their eyes closed. They seem to do these kind of fluttery blinks while their eyes are still closed. It's like a lid pressing together, but it's not actually mm. opening or closing. It's just increasing in tension. So your lids are pressing together. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of level of detail. And I'm going to move on to the eye direction. So right in the center is the eye direction control on the, on the face board. So if you move this, it's going to move both eyes together. And it's got nice soft eye approach. So it's going to move those lids. There's no counterbalancing. You don't have to reposition your eyelids every time the eye moves because that's already built into the rig. And that's going to work with your eyes are shut. It's going to keep all that nice um, organic Boy. movement as you move the eyes around underneath the lids. Bit of REM sleeping. Yeah, all the blend shapes happens, uh, happen under the hood for you. Uh, so you if don't you need to worry. do so wish to make your um, actor cross-eyed, you can. By using the left and right eye cool. independently. That's mean a bad day. Which then, if you do add those in, you can still drive them together with the center control. Like so. If someone's just got a, a lazy high eye, perhaps, you can use that stylistic choice up to you uh, there's some tweaker controls above these for the pupil dilation uh -huh. cool shader uh, shader level you just I come guess. into a, a very dark room and you need wide eyes or vice versa if it's very bright it's going to narrow the eyes oh no it's making the no 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 it's uh, not the iris convergence no? control here so this is going to slightly give you a, a more centered look as if you were looking at a pencil like in front of your face or something Uh, and that's the eye direction. That's the eye direction on the face board. There is a, a different option, mm. which can be very, very useful when working that's in cool scenes. Running. If you need to, uh, like, track an object, or if you just need a like a like a world space look at control. No, it's really, really good. You turn this switch on down here, down in the switchboard. If we turn that on, uh, it's going to swap over oh. from the onboard face control to this kind of global look at control here. So we can see now that the flip uh, the switch is flipped. This control no longer affects the eyes. So we're kind of switching the inputs and it puts it onto this one here. So this uh, big red box around the outside, if we move this around, it's gonna- Yeah, so you can snap this the, one is. So you, this, you this the control lives in world space, which is yeah. extremely useful if you have uh, a scene set up 
and you need it to track uh, an object that's moving around a scene or yeah. a person that's walking around um, and you don't want to... Most of the cases, in my experience of animating eyes, uh, you prefer to use this controller because uh, it is naturally really hard and try, test, try to test this, to move your head with the eyes synchronized. You are always tracking one step forward. So when you move your eyes, you don't move your eyes like this. You do this. You catch up. You catch up. You catch up. You catch up. That's what happens with the eyes. So in a time of controller, you do the same thing. If this is the controller, I'm going to turn my head. I move this. My head catch up. You know, you are always scanning. You are doing saccadic movements, darts. So... Uh, unless you want to do, you know, say if you need to do something very fast, you can use the other controller, but naturally our eyes are completely independent of our head. Our eyes arrive first, our head catch up all the time. They are not synchronized. Try, for example, to look to a train in a station, uh, keeping your eyes static. The only way of doing that is trying to cross your eyes and look like something behind but our eyes are completely independent of our head i have to kind of eyeball it from the controls you can see exactly where the eyes yeah, are course, pointed and constraint. what they're going to be looking at uh, especially with these kind of laser beams coming out of the eyes here there's no question about where the actor is looking uh, it's very very useful for for being accurate with your yes. uh, direction uh, there's, there's also these two inner circles here independent which move the eyes as well but they can be moved uh, independently so if you need a you know one eye tracking something while well, another eye tracks the floor if that's what you want you can do it you can do it why not and the best use that i find for these center controls is to use them for kind of subtle eye darts so for example when we're talking to someone and looking at them in, in the face we don't tend to stare them you know like stare intently and don't move we, we have all these kind of subtle eye darts that go on but perhaps they're walking around and you want to maintain your tracking of that person you've locked this onto their face as they walk around but you want to keep the eyes alive and have these kind of subtle darts you can do that with these little ones in the middle all the while the uh, the overall direction is the same so you can move these and then move them on top to get some extra subtleties flicking from eye to eye perhaps as the other person talks or maybe down to the mouth but you still want to be tracking the face so this is basically how darts work you, so you have this kind of uh, information in this fashion you 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 move to a position in this way and then you stay there for a while and then you change for the next position that's how eye darts work we do this kind of one, two, three. We never go slow. It's very hard to move on a slide in a linear fashion. We always go to these jumps, jumps. And also you see these tiny jumps down, down. This is actually how an animation curve looks for, for the eyes naturally. And this is how we register faces. So if you are interested, then this is how you can bring a realistic animation in the eyes just pay attention to saccadic movements that that's how you want to animate your your characters in a very accurate way because we register this information in this way we are doing this kind of saccadic movement you see here these tiny things so that's why you don't use the controllers of the eyes you use the you constrain i prefer some animators maybe do another way i prefer just always to constrain because even if there is extra effort you are gonna have really, really realistic eyes. Um, so yeah, you need to keep that in mind. Uh, and here you have even four different uh, options, a category of movement, four different if you are uh, registering memory, if you're remembering something, if you are imagining something, if you are thinking about the future, if you are thinking about the past. This is not something shamanic, this is science. So keep that in mind. It's really, really powerful for that. And it will help keep your characters looking nice and alive. Awesome. Um, we also have the convergence option down here, which is the same as the convergence on the face board. When you turn that on, it gives you kind of this centered focus point That's right cool. in the middle. So it's kind of bringing the eyes together um, into the center, which is good for anything that's going to be close up to your character. For example, like if uh, I don't know, a fly is buzzing around her face and she's tracking it and it's going to, it's going to feel like it's really close and like on the tip of her nose almost. It's really good just to get that, that extra focus. And then you turn it off, she kind of goes back into the distance. 
So that's there if you need to, and you can animate that on and off. Um, and that's all there is really about the actual look at control. This switch down here on the bottom can be animated, so you can flick between the onboard face control and the look at control um, just whenever you like. So it will maintain any yes. data underneath. Anything you've animated yes, right. on there doesn't get deleted or removed. It keeps it, and it just kind of changes the override of what's controlling the eyes. So you can animate them both and then flick between the two depending on what your needs are. If you need to be super accurate and track something, then use the I would use the look at. If you need to be, for example, following some footage that you've recorded, it's maybe going to be easier to use this. There's uh, only, it's, uh, the there's only there. one moment where you don't need to do a step or, or like kind of halfway, which is tracking an object very fast. When it tracks the object very fast, sometimes you have a little bit of linear, but if you go to the micro detail, it's, it's subdivided by micro steps. But for animation, you can get something done uh, with you, linear whatever, sometimes, whatever not always. But yeah, most of the cases a step. Uh, I'm going to move on to the brows. So up the face at the very top, we have the brow control. So at the very top, we've got the brow raises. So this is going to lift the eyebrows up in four controls. So you've got the outer brow, I the imagine inner that's brow, triggering normals, inner brow, outer brow. Because the geometry is not that uh, with that amount of resolution. So I guess it's C bar size is triggering normals. You can just raise one. Triggering normals by need to be very worried. the controller. You can raise these and bring the outers down. Gives you a kind of worried look. If you want to increase that, we can go down here and get the brow down control. This is going to pull the brows down. We are not going to see the running graph. So these ones lift. That one lowers. They can be used together for different effects. So you can see there with them up. Obviously, there is no new running graph. I'm just curious and angry. And if you want to how they the are further, testing and experimenting with keyframe animation. Brow laterals here, which bring the eyebrows in. in because the that's that's the next challenge: bringing animators that the they can the feel way. comfortable in in the graph editor. Like so. UI looks amazing. Graph so editor. So now I want to check that. And I use Graph and Editor in Unreal Engine. The very last thing I want to talk about is uh, this last tweaker over here on the right, which is a full upper face squeeze but control. But the thing is, when you have like plus 50 controllers, the amount of design you need in a Graph Editor is, is high. Uh, is high. Even with Blender, I am struggling a lot for many things. And right now, Maya in those terms is still the the king on on the graph editor. Um, I'm just curious how this is gonna translate in a clean, um, with a nice flow inside a graph editor when you are animating this amount of controllers. But I'm pretty sure they are my thinking about it. So using this is gonna really it's like a it's like a full upper face control. I just said an oxymoron. You can't say I'm pretty sure I might. Or you're pretty sure or they are might. But you know, it's maybe it's my wish versus reality. So it moves the brows, the cheeks, all the surrounding area. And this is like it's really great if you if you have like a very tight squeezed face. So for example, if you have your eyes shut and you're scrunching everything down. You can just max this out and you get like real load of tension all around the cheeks and eyebrows, all in one control. Real amount of detail, eh? Like quite organic, not just um, symmetrical, like, you know, like different wrinkles. So I guess this data is taken from, I don't know how, how it works in the in a, in a lower level, if it works like uh, sculptors or uh, photogrammetry, scanned actors. But really, that's, amount that's of nice uh, missing an amount of detail. A, a super extreme, like tense face. Or you see, you can use it with cheek raise. Increase it further. Yeah, um, Maya. And that's that's terms, the whole rig. I'm gonna just briefly show you through some uh, some examples of like how to make certain expressions, just to give you an idea of what kind of combinations I'd use see. in certain environments. Um, so I'm just going to start off with uh, like a like a super angry rage face. So I'm just going to drop the jaw a little bit. I'm going to increase some upper lip raise to show some teeth. Increase some stretching to get some tension in the lower lip. Oh, I've still got the tongue sticking out. Let me pull that back in. Um, Bring in some corner pull to activate the cheek area. Drop the lower lip down. 
show some more teeth and if you want to increase some anger on the upper face bring up that nose start bringing in tension there again bringing in all this anger in the whole face and it's just kind of additive so we can just keep bringing in things that we need we find things are lacking uh, I might want some more tension around the sides of the nose so I'm going to go for some nasolabial deepen that crease there That one is a bit push. lower, perhaps, so I'm going to bring in some corner to press. Or perhaps she's gritting her teeth, mm -hmm. and I want lots of clench. So I'm going to activate the muscles at the side of the face. You see all this anger coming in now uh, to and increase neck, even further, neck. start bringing in some neck. You see all this tension starting to build, just adding these controls together. And you can get some really intense looking faces it would be nice if uh, they provide tools to add i think they don't need to provide i think it's gonna be completely doable where you can have uh, even I, I see here like two three layers of uh mm, in the same way that you have different uh, level in programming you have different levels in animating rigging etc so we see like two three levels of detail uh, i'm wondering if uh, how cool would be again to have another UI here in the bottom where you can program easily in blueprints uh, new controllers, global controllers, um, plug with control rig because this is based in control rig. Um, you know, like okay, angry face, and you just take a linear shape or a, a exponential or logarithm that doesn't matter, where you can just go zero to one, and then you just uh, uh, freeze the value in zero, and then you just put zero point five for the eyebrows, zero point five for the mouth here, zero, and you connect angry face with one controller altogether because you don't want to get the angry face, you don't want to uh, stay. Two minutes preparing the angry face of course you can you can copy paste keyframes but um in rigs usually in vfx we we can see these kind of pre-made shapes um not just the position and rotation also you can see a slider where you can go from sad to angry to happy to taking all the controllers all together but that's optional of course it's quite quickly with a few controls uh, obviously, you can dive in further and really make this super intricate. Um, but you know, just to just to show they you use how dynamics for this one. Do you know that? A, turn this into disgusted. So if she's just really displeased with something. She's seen something really icky and she doesn't like it. Maybe bringing in some of the running gamer squints here. Perhaps not as much of the stretch. Bit more corner to press. Maybe some asymmetry would be nice. She's really not happy with whatever she's seeing. That's gross over there. I don't like that. Don't want the neck on though. Uh, or perhaps I want to turn this into super scared. So she's going to be fearing for her life now. Excuse me. So I'm going to alleviate some of that tension in the brows start bringing them up in the middle and we want to open the eyes really wide show the fear coming through so the dynamics the nose up nose up tends to be more the dynamics nose down you get the kind of running i'm very curious the dynamics uh, comment you did there you are saying are you saying that they use dynamics for this facial animation Yes, you can use library, but the big difference between using library and having, uh, having, um, sorry, you ha having a library versus having a global controllers, is that uh, visually having a slider, you can tune how much angry you want the character without doing a layer. So you have something zero to one. You can say, okay, I'm gonna go here, and you can see all the controllers. That's the difference between having something boolean zero one, yes or no copy pasting library and having something lineal or or exponential or logarithm or you know with limits that fashion provides animators more control of or with the client like a little bit more angry a little bit less angry but obviously that's like 
too much in a, in a high level, but sometimes if you are animating very fast and you need to do 50 shots, okay, angry face, angry face, yes, libraries, but with linear control is better. Uh, so you know this for sure, that is Dynamics UI, not, not a, a lifelink app of Unreal Engine with cleanup. I'm very curious about your and why you think it's that. This. If you found any article I, I missed or something. Hopefully you're keeping up with what I'm doing here. So just because dynamics is what we use, I think, in ATLM when I was working there. Just exploring some expressions with you, just to kind of show you how the rig can be worked together. Um, for example, our happy smile is always good. So if I take off this. And go back to the smile because the smile is a complex one and it's always tricky to to really nail down and know which controls you need to hit uh, i'm just going to zero out everything um bear with me one second while i just zero out oh never mind do it manually Ooh, okay they need to put a controller to zero out things because I see it's struggling just to zero out, I guess. And we are not seeing the second screen. That's the thing with Unreal. Um, the more you start to work in the UI, Unreal is not, it originally is not meant to work in the in the viewer in terms of in the same way that Houdini, you work with the notes and gets a little bit funky when you work in the UI because then you need a new edit tab where you can just apply transforms, change the pivot position, things that are more in uh, classic in other softwares. And now things like clearing up the transforms, applying the transforms, things like that, very basic. Uh, if they want to go to that level, of bringing animators to Unreal Engine, we need those tools 100%. Not maybe for from the team of MetaHuman, it's more about the interface of Unreal Engine, which is one of the things I hope uh, they are gonna implement at some point because it's really, really, really needed. I guess here in the in the transform, you can just, actually you have the tools here to clear, to clear the, the transforms, if I'm not wrong center this back in there so okay i'm gonna make a happy face so start with corner pull bringing these corners nice out yeah yeah, yeah of course that's a blend shape with the slider uh, running but what i mean is the option in a higher level to move a number of controllers sub controllers with one controller so you don't need the question is if every single time you put an angle face you have to move one two three four five six seven eight controllers more or less always in the same direction just having a higher level controller that moves all these eight guys at the same time connected with this value so you slide up and down so you don't connect a blend shape you connect the co you you connect the you the parent the parent is the global controller the childs are the eight controllers and the childs of the controllers are the movement of the skeleton plus the delta of the blend shapes so you move from this controller two levels of detail uh, uh, downwards in the hierarchy maybe you think well that doesn't look very happy so Dynamics with Life Link uh, UE4. I don't know, well, Marvelous Designer Cloth Simulation is compatible. Uh, compatibility, I mean, it's compatible. This is compatible with paint in terms of I can do a snapshot and paint on top on paint. This is compatible because I guess you can export meshes as a FBX in the higher level, maybe not the rigs. I'm not sure I read something about Maya, things like that. And then once you have, once you get the 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 FBX outside the, any software, you can do whatever you want with that. You can do marvelous. You can sculpt and see brush, and then bring that as a as, as a delta with different deformations. You can just do the delta mesh in Houdini. You can use Velum. You can use whatever. Once you have the caches, caches are just vertex information in the world space. So. It's compatible with anything, but not because they thought maybe about Marvelous Designer. Is if you are able to export something, it is compatible with basically everything, um, even Nuke. 
this because we don't just smile with our mouths. It's got to go up the face. So we need the cheek raise. Mm -hmm. How do you how you know that, so Ronnie? I want to bit. drop me a line. I want to talk. Get a bit of squint going, smiling with the eyes. It's already starting to look a little bit happier. Maybe we want to drop down the lower lip a little bit. Show how how you know all that? Raise Sorry, if I'm just pushing too much. To maybe she's laughing. Gonna drop that down. It's coming together. Oh, I've still got clench on. That's not gonna help a smile. Yeah, I working. I working at the neck and, and, like and ILM with this kind of systems. Uh, ILM, I was doing crowds and the neck, I was working real time with different things that I can't uh, uh, disclose. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, you end up in motion builder for sure for the amount of options and cleanup and um, and live recording as well you have there. Um, I'm just curious what is the good balance for the indie budgets uh, to get a uh, believable uh, data uh, in terms of animation and cleanup. Um, I need to keep an eye because I'm actually now in the path of investing in four motion capture systems. Left in the mid brows, you see how it's just softening her up, just these little touches, and now I've got a happy face. Well, the thing is, the reason why you can't export Alembic right now, I mean, in UI, it could happen. You can, you can do it. I mean, you, look, uh, in the, the thing is, formats doesn't matter. You can export anything in anything. At the end of the day, you are just passing information. Formats, extensions are just containers of information. That's it. So in the same way you can bring crowds as Niagara points, uh, world position offsets, offset, texture animation, uh, FBXs. This is just information of transforms in a position in the world space. So um, you can export a you know, you can just take whatever and do even a, you can export anything in an image, in a QR code if you want, in an EXR image. You can export animation as, as, as color, as text, as anything as sound as a wavelength it does you can export animation as any kind of as binary and then read that um so the question about if you can export alembics is more about uh, how overkill is that compared with others other things so uh, you can the thing is you you never read alembics in unreal engine even, even when you import alembics what you do what happens under the hood it just converts the geometry data, which is very heavy on this, of an Alembic, it converts that into a vertex animation textures under the hood. So that, is, that is read by the GPU in the first frame uh, in their own kind of buckets, and, and you can string that there. So that's why the Alembic never exists inside Unreal Engine in the moment you import. In the same way, Unreal Engine converts any geometry to their own in-house Unreal asset for optimization and to run that in real time so you don't need to read from the disk that is a overkill so that's why you can't export an alembic but you can find way around of exporting alembics from unreal engine but why if you can export a fbx why you why you want to do that in in other fashion no like so uh, hopefully this has been useful. Um, sorry if I've waffled on too much, but yeah, that's the rig. Thank you for watching. So okay, goodbye everyone. Of course, a big shout to uh, Adam Walton's Adam Walton. Uh, yeah, really, really, really cool, cool work, guys of Epic. Um, I saw something interesting. Um, obviously, three lateral is behind this, I guess. Um, and you can see the progress from the past few years with different tests and how they were improving. Um, there is something interesting about it, which is 
the 3D three lateral page. If someone is interesting about CE doubles, hard this career. And you can just go here, and if you are quite into that, pay attention to what they want to, to find. And there is someone that there is something that obviously this is public. Um, this is some uh, this is a position that grabs uh, my attention, and this one as well. Um, because this is more, I can imagine this is for UI interface, and this is maybe for a mock-up, and you can read uh, more or less the offer. C++, Python, Julia made love, R, Maya. So, you know, they are doing a really amazing work. Um, I hope uh, everyone now at some point can put their hands on it and do really amazing content. I think if we push all together all this tech and we go, go we, we give the proper feedback i'm pretty sure the the community is gonna bring a lot of new ideas stories characters i just wish uh they provide enough tools to uh, break a specific anatomy limits um because to me if you can't cross the uncanny valley you need to be sure that you don't even cross the first the the, the dive what is the name dive the, the dive the dive knows no you want to be just before entering the uncanny unless you are able to cross the line of the uncanny which is you know the corpus like this then goes like this and then goes like this no if you stay here and you are not gonna cross this you better want to be before falls and for that you need to break anatomy limits in the same way uh, James Cameron was quite smart, uh, you know, Avatar in the very beginning, the alien creatures they were to, they were going to be with uh, orange skin. Um, and James Cameron decided, just because it was going to be very uncanny, because the technology wasn't ready, he decided to do it, to do them blue. So just for the fact that put them blue and with a kind of cat nose, you can break the uncanny because you are not seeing a human face anymore. And the art direction of that provides you a more, not realistic, but believable character. Again, I always push about this idea of not being realistic, but being believable. So I just hope uh, they thought about that, about breaking limits, not just with animation, but also in the metahuman cloud uh, system they are gonna implement, or I don't know exactly how it's gonna work. Uh, so if that's the case, we can play around to don't hit the uncanny ballet. Um, so that's a little bit what I'm very, very, very personally very curious about it. Like how much you can stretch the limits. And it's pretty hard because obviously you are, you try to leverage two different approaches, hyper realism and uh, feature animation uh, art director art directed design no so let's see what happens anyway thank you for being here i'm gonna connect back in a bit i don't know maybe in a couple of hours or something like that and in that case i'm gonna jump to uh, game design if you are following me on 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 youtube uh check the twitch account real time mayhem i can i'm gonna share it uh here so because i'm just doing longer live sessions on on Twitch, both about filmmaking and game design, both about filmmaking, that's me repeating myself. So I leave that on the chat uh, if you are interested and you want to follow me on Twitch, here is the link. So thank you for being here again. Uh, congratulations, Epic. I think you are doing a really amazing job. I'm really excited to see how this develops and hope all you guys enjoy the video and I can't wait to see what content the community is going to bring to the to the scene of real-time craziness and mayhem 